Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Comstock Channel. I'm Arlen Bowling with you. Glad to have you with us. Today, I have a very special guest. I'm talking with Andy Campbell. He's the director of insights for a company called Tractor Zoom. This is going to be a fascinating discussion here. Uh, we're going to talk about his farm roots and how he ended up where he is right now and how it may help you in the meantime uh, in your own farm operation. Now, remember, be sure to like and uh, click on subscribe down below. Also, share this video with your friends and uh, neighbors. Help them out as well. Andy, good to have you with us here on the show. I appreciate that. Uh, first of all, from your farm background, if you would, give us a little update on how you actually got through your ag experience and how that helped you get to where you are right now. Right. So, Marlon, first of all, thanks for having us on. I uh, really appreciate it. But uh, I actually started my experience on a farm up in northern Iowa, outside of the metro, uh, metro area named Rudd, so between Mason City and Charles City up there. But it probably started by my dad telling me not to stay on the farm. Uh, he's like, not probably a future for you here. Uh, and so went away to college, got a degree in engineering. From there, I didn't go too far from ag, though I worked with food companies, Cargill, General Mills. Uh, but everything I was doing with them, that uh, aspect still dealt with a lot of numbers. Uh, still was in the food chain. Uh, I went back, got my MBA, and uh, through a kind of a, a winding route, uh, taught at college for a little while, and got heavier into the data analytics, got into entrepreneurial programs, uh, helped some startups, and worked with, again with a lot of food companies before I eventually landed with TractorZoom, probably about four years ago. And uh, the data side helped, the, the background that I had in marketing and business helped, but what has probably helped the most was the roots that I established on the farm back in Northern Iowa and being able to relate all the data that we take in in TractorZoom. We can explain a little bit what TractorZoom does here in a second, but we have a, a trove of data, but how you explain what that data actually means. And it was a little easier when I knew what it was like on the ground. Uh, and so still involved with the farm up in Northern Iowa. And uh, now I'm able to relate information about machine prices, supply, and what that actually means for the American farmer uh, that's in it day in and day out. So talk to me, if you would, uh, about your current work. You work gathering data, and it's related to the pricing of farm equipment. Do you uh, accumulate data on other uh, information as well, like land prices or anything, or is it strictly machinery? So it is, it's focused on heavy machinery. Uh, we know okay. that I, it does a, a fantastic job with land values, and there's a lot of other people that, that can find land values that are out there. But what we're seeing within the machinery market is the fluctuation just due to supply, due to different factors in the market. It was changing pretty drastically. And there's just so many more variables when you're talking about machines. I mean, you've got all the categories of machines, the make and model, and all the machines now with more tech just have so many more uh, trinkets on them. So, you know, the subscriptions, everything that makes the prices harder to determine. And so that's where we wanted to help people make better decisions with good data. Uh, to know what their you know what their machine is worth and also to know the supply that's out there in the market i would imagine that this information is probably expensive to the farmers though from the farmers no really what we do in our goal is to help the farmers find the equipment that they need and so everything that we offer to the farmer is completely free we really? aggregate free yep we and again it, it gets back to the data we're a data company we're not an advertising company and so we aggregate about 2,000 auction years from across the nation into one spot. So all of those auctions that are happening live, people can go there, find the equipment they need. And then we also partner with dealers. Again, about 2,000 dealer locations across the nation. So then farmers in one spot can say they're looking for a particular tractor. You know, for us, we upgraded planters about two years ago. Our seed tender would no longer actually fit the old, uh, the new planter from the old. So went on there and I just said, hey, looking for a seed tender that is this kind of spec and it would email me when one came up for auction or when a dealer within my radius had one. So it's just helping me find the equipment I need at the price that fits our operation. Was there a cost to the auctioneer company then? Nope, no. So again, being the data company and again, wanting to help people in the industry, we don't charge auctioneers to be able to list. We don't charge any dealers to list their equipment on our site. We really want it to be a free and open site that people can find as much as they want. Uh, and then with that, you know, the data is worthwhile. And so we help you know, the, the dealers across the country, the farm credits, uh, large ag banks, insurers, 
anybody that wants to know a residual value on a piece of machinery, we, because we have all that data and that, I think we have about $40 billion worth of equipment data within our system right now, uh, we can help people find the value of a piece of machinery, you know, no matter how old it is, how new, uh, we should be able to triangulate that value for them pretty quickly so they can make the decision and, and move on. So I would imagine all your data is probably pretty current then. It is. Yeah. So actually, I was just looking at uh, some 8R340s, and they were from the auction just last weekend. Uh, and so that's one of our value propositions that you don't have to wait for what happened last quarter. And that's especially pertinent now because you know, the market is changing quick right now. Uh, a little bit to the downside. And so we're able to look week to week, almost day to day. Everything's updated at midnight and we pull in the results from yesterday. It's uploaded into the system. And yeah, as long as the auction is happening, as long as the dealer listing is out there, we can see those new values the next day. So I would imagine this would be of high interest to financial institutions that are lending on stuff like this, just so that they can verify what asset values are, right? Right, yeah, because we talk with a lot of you know, bank directors, a lot of risk evaluators uh, and farm credits across the country. And one of the challenges that they're in right now is the valuations that they put on machines one, two, almost three years ago now are not what they currently are. Even if the usage hasn't increased that much, it starts to put them at a higher risk for the uh, the chattel that they're, um, that they're lending again. And especially because the farming landscape has changed a little bit. I mean, some of the older, more mature farmers have a lot of land that's back in them. But a lot of the other farmers, especially ones that uh, my custom work, a lot of their assets are actually tied up in machinery. And that puts them, when the market fluctuates to the downside, that puts them at a little bit more of a risk. And so, yeah, a lot of the, the risk officers at large lending institutions will look at this to see, are they overextended and uh, how they've lent out money? Well, that leads me to the next question then uh, with the, let's say, grain prices just tanking here over the last year or so. Has that uh, shown itself or revealed itself in the price of equipment? Uh, has it taken a big drop as well? Or how much movement have you seen then since maybe last spring? Right. So general economics would say that once we started to see the commodity prices soften in the middle of last year, that we would start to see the used equipment values, especially at auction, because auction tends to be more responsive. Uh, we'd expect to see that drop. And we, we did see it soften a little bit, especially in combines first, because there's also a higher supply of combines that are out there, especially class A combines. But we didn't nearly see it drop as much as what we anticipated. Even talking with a lot of the dealers out there, they expected kind of the bottom to fall out of the combine market and then later the row crop tractor market later. And it didn't in, you know, so uh, really August is when they expected it. It didn't so much. October, November, December is also when they thought it would drop out and it did soften. But what had happened at the end of last year is that, especially for low hour machines that are really going for the, the premium dollar out there, there were enough farmers with profitable uh, years in 23, almost unexpected profitable years with the, the way things ended up, that they had cash in their pocket and they really went out and bought what they wanted to buy at auction and they bid each other up. Uh, and so what we saw at the end of 23 for low hour, really high quality machines is that those brought a premium in the sprayer category, in the combine category for certain ones, and certainly in the row crop track category, that those went above what we'd consider trend line uh, all the way up to pretty much the 29th of December. Now, some of your lower hour stuff, some of the things that have more usage, that did get a little bit softer towards the end of the years. Headers kind of took it in the shorts. Uh, and so for row crop headers, they, they dropped a little bit. But throughout the end of December, auction prices were strong. But now that we're in January, whole new, you know, fiscal year, the story's changing. So this reminds me of, let's say, for example, the pickup market, pickup trucks after the right. pandemic. Uh, there was a time there where, you know, the, the new ones were starting to get scarce because of the computer chip shortage. And, you know, there for a while, I mean, used pickups were darn near the, the same price as a, as a new one. They were right. scarce and they were in high demand. I remember uh, some folks telling me that they had actually sold their pickup that was maybe two or three years old back to the dealer for more than they originally gave to it. And right. they just pocketed the money and waited for the price to come back down or they bought something else to get by for a couple of years. But I thought that was really intriguing. 
is that kind of mirroring then what you think is happening here in the ag sector? It, it did. And, and funny that you brought that up because I talked to a young farmer yesterday from uh, Indiana, Illinois area, and he was talking about the last two to three years he managed his family's fleet. And they're a, a very large farmer out there. And he said last two to three years, he was turning his equipment every year and making money on it. It was a revenue stream for their operation. And he, he was commenting and, and talking to me. He's like, but I'm running the numbers. It's not working out right now. Like I'm losing money when I use my equipment. And uh, it's just a little bit of uh, a shock of reality that this is general depreciation. This is, you know, quote unquote, back to normal times. And, uh, and we're to those normal times now where you're going to expect that annual depreciation on your equipment when it gets used, when it gets older, uh, we're back to those normal times now. But yes, the, the chip shortage and the wire harness shortage really led to a lot of these waves, not only in price, but in supply. Like we had no supply because of that. And then it hit the combines first, then it hit row crop tractors. And then late last year, then I think it's kind of trickling into the uh, self-propelled sprayers. And it just, it's not an even flow into the market. And that's why we had a surge of all those categories. And now dealers are trying to work through that volume to try to reduce their inventory going into these, probably a long tail of a, of a rough agricultural season. Wow, that's fascinating. So it, in essence, in that case, I would think, uh, you know, as long as they keep rolling over equipment, if they were getting new equipment and getting it with low hours on it, reselling it and, and either getting their money back or making money on it, at least in that circumstance, it's still under warranty the whole time too, right? Right. And that was one of their key points is they want to keep it under warranty. They want to keep the maintenance low so then they can keep those costs low. And now it's getting to the point though, even, and I would say right now, one of the the risky parts is that low hour equipment because at dealerships and in general out there, there is a fair amount of supply of low hour late model equipment of your combines, your row crop tractors, especially the 8Rs. And now it's getting to be that point on those larger self propelled sprayers that there's a slug of that equipment out there. And similar to what is kind of more generally experienced in the forage market with large beef farmers, it's harder to find that second buyer. So the big question that everybody has with you know the X9s and the the new class nine, 10 combines. Yeah, you can find a one big operator to buy that first one, but when they don't want it anymore, who's gonna buy that second one? And we're running into a, you know, kind of dipping our toes into those waters right now. What's that like? Because there is quite a bit of supply out there for that slightly used, maybe just past warranty type of machine. It's a good machine, but it's either facing a huge price depreciation uh, or somebody's having to pay more than what they want for it. So it's stuck in a weird middle ground right all right. Well, Andy, we're just kind of touching the tip of the iceberg here, but you actually do updates on the, the data that you uh, uncover. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know uh, how often you do this, but you put out your own podcasts related to this, right? Yeah. So what we'll do is we have a lot of dealer partners all across North America. We've got a lot of financing partners, both ad credits, large banks. And so every quarter we'll, we'll put out kind of a webinar and go through the major categories, the ones that present the highest risk those just to give an idea on what the supply is in the market and where the values are trending. Again, from a dealer standpoint, they really need to be looking six to nine months into the future to try to anticipate where that value is going to be. And so every quarter we'll be putting out a webinar. Uh, we're also getting into all the social channels that I'm getting to the age point where like, I got to probably get TikTok and, uh, you know, and Instagram and all that just to put out the video shorts uh, of the daily markets. Because again, we're getting stuff in every night and like this past weekend uh, with those ADAR tractors, just to see some of those drop below trend line, that's a good indication that that market might be tipping a little bit. And so our partners kind of rely on that, uh, almost that instant data to make their decisions. And so we want to make sure that the people know what's going on in the market. Well, how do we find that then? Yeah, so many different ways. So TractorZoom's got channels on Instagram, on Twitter, and uh, Facebook as well. So it's good places to find equipment, but also that's where we'll push a lot of our updates. Uh, and then like I said, got to probably get on TikTok at some point, but I got to figure out how to, how to work the TikTok uh, and all that. But those are the, the best places to find us. And then also on tractorzoom.com, we've got links to all the social channels. And that's usually the easiest is to go to tractorzoom.com and then everything is linked. Uh, through the site. Well, I would imagine that'll be something in high demand this time of year as everybody uh, gets geared up for the new planting season. And they're uh, 
taking another look at the equipment they're going to need or maybe some things they need to upgrade before they hit the field. So, yeah, it's getting crunch time. Andy, it's great to talk with you. I appreciate that, and I wish you well. Thanks for joining us here for a little bit, but uh, wish you all the best there at Tractor Zoom. Thank you, Marlon. It's been a pleasure being on, and, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing what this equipment market does up to planning season. Absolutely. That's Andy Campbell. He is the director of Insight for Tractor Zoom. That'll do it for this edition of uh, the Commodity Channel presentation here. And for producer Brian Hendrickson, I'm Marlon Bowling. Hope you have a terrific day. Thanks for joining us on our Comstock YouTube channel. Don't forget you can also find us on Facebook and TikTok as well.